while COBRA was the most important or the only avant-garde movement in Europe after the Second World War. The COBRA movement was an avant-garde art movement in post-war Europe. It was made up of artists from Copenhagen, Brussels, and Amsterdam, thus the acronym COBRA. The art was a spirit of experimentation and collaboration. So different that they were just, that people just couldn't comprehend. And just after the war, they wanted to continue the way things were. They just wanted to follow the easy lines and it was way too experimental. Well, what they really wanted to is spontaneity. And they were against uh, traditionalism, against academism and they wanted a real contact with the matter, the material. They wanted freedom, they wanted uh, uh, the unconscious uh, of Freud and Marxism also, uh, the theories of Marx were very important. And it, and it started really with ideas. At one side in their work they wanted to be really primitivist, they didn't, didn't, didn't want to know anything anymore of academism, of the tradition in Europe. And at the same time, they had ideals about the, uh, the future society. That society would change and they would be the forerunners about how art would be then. COBRA founding paper was really one simple paper where they just said, we don't want to continue the way it is now with surrealism. It's much way too intellectual and we don't like uh, the linear forms of abstract all the abstract art right now, we want to have a more free and from within art, more expressive art. The Cobra artists worked together as a group from 1948 to 1951, but so much of their work was about collaboration and experimentation that even after the Cobra group officially disbanded in 1951, they continued to work together uh, throughout most of their careers. The leaders, not all of the, all of the group, but the leaders, Aska Jorn from Denmark and Constant from the Netherlands and the writer Christian d'Autremont from Belgium, they were very uh, Marxistic. He met uh, Aska Jorn in 1946. It was in uh, Galerie Pierre Loup, Rue de Seine in Paris. And, uh, it was uh, during that time in the gallery a Miro exhibition uh, that was also the starting of uh, the uh, later Cobra group. And Constant coming back in Holland, he started immediately uh, to find experimental artists to connect to, to uh, uh, get the same experimental group as there was already in Denmark, the Hearst group. And in uh, 1947, Corneille and Apple visited Constant because they heard about this endeavor of uh, Constant. And that was the first exhibition of all three, Apple, Corneille and Constant. And um, there was a lot of parallels between the artists in the United States and Europe at the same time. Paris, um, before the war and certainly right after the world war, was still the center of the art world. But by the early 1950s, as one author put it, New York stole the idea of modern art. The power structure and the gallery system, as well as the new art, was, all seemed to be coming out of New York. Um, or at least that is how art history was written for the last few decades. It's only been um, in the last two decades that art produced in Europe after World War II has risen in its importance in art history, at least in the United States. I think it was always important in Europe. It's only that we're just catching up now. In America, this movement has been understudied and underappreciated. However, with the growing impact of artists from Eastern Europe and Germany and the rest of, the, of Europe, who are influenced by the Cobra artists. It's essential for us to understand what this movement was really about and how it influenced the next generations of artists. But it was a, a movement that really made its own, had its own publications and its own meetings and was not a, a movement uh, arranged by the government or given a, given a name by some uh, uh, journalist. Uh, it, it was really a kind of uh, more or less a political movement. 
Their visions really were shaped by their experiences during this uh, turbulent time. And very much like the artists in the United States, such as the abstract expressionists, uh, Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko and Barnett Newman, they were looking to make a break with the past and to start anew, create a new work for a new time, work that was international, work that dealt with um, the inner workings of the mind. And they were inspired by a sort of primal source within. I feel the, they thought the children had, the mentally ill had, the, all the artists from Africa had that made the masks. But they wanted that also everybody should be free to be artistic and that a new folk art would start from that moment on.